Welcome traders to another Tickmill Weekly Market Outlook with me, Patrick Munley. For the week commencing Monday the 5th of July, uh, the dollar has enjoyed a strong start to July and a healthy June non-farm payrolls release uh, should keep the dollar bid against the low yielders at least. Though the unemployment rate was higher than expected, progress in jobs gains will be welcomed by the Federal Reserve and likely to keep US monetary policy rates biased towards a 2022 rate hike. Sluggish dollar performance Friday, probably owed to profit taking ahead of the Independence Day holiday and some larger FX options expiries. US trading will be quiet in a holiday shortened week. Uh, the calendar is pretty light with the highlight probably being the release of the FOMC minutes on Wednesday. Most focus will be given to how the Doves and Hawks are arguing their cases, especially seven members casting their dots for the first rate hike in 2022. Internationally, the focus will be on whether the G20 on Friday formally signs off on a new global minimum tax standard. Also be interested in Chinese cash and PMI readings on Wednesday and inflation readings on Friday. On the latter, investors will examine whether there remains a gulf between the PPI and CPI 9% year over year versus 1.3% respectively, meaning that Chinese policymakers will do their utmost to limit input prices. So from a technical perspective, the uh, dollar put in a reversal uh, into the close on Friday, and I'm looking for a pullback now in to test the monthly pivot at 91.50 as support. From there, look for bullish reversal patterns to realign on the long side, looking for the equality objective up to 93.73 and potentially the yearly pivot just above at 94.14. At this stage, only a loss of the 90.50 level would suggest an early resumption to the downtrend. In terms of the euro, uh, for the week ahead, the European data calendar is very light indeed, uh, with focus on more investor confidence surveys, Centix Monday, uh, ZEW Tuesday, and on Wednesday, the release of the European Commission's summer forecast. These presumably should see growth upgrades. Germany will on Wednesday see May industrial production expected to rebound in line with better sentiment indicators. Some improvement in the hard data could provide the euro with a little support uh, early in the week. So uh, the euro uh, put in a, a reversal on Friday into the close there. So I'm looking for a corrected move up into test the monthly pivot at uh, 119.80 to the 120 area. Watch for uh, bearish reversal patterns here to set short positions targeting the equality objective down to 116.25. At this stage really it would take a uh, close above monthly range resistance at 122.20 and the descending trend line resistance to refocus on the upside. Uh, the yen looks to be taking a breather ahead of multi-year resistance around the 112.20 area. It's hard to see US rates coming off too sharply from current levels and the dollar yen may well have built a new floor in the 110.40 area. There may not be enough in the calendar to drive the dollar yen through uh, 112.20 in the week ahead, but should stay reasonably well bid. Lastly, we were focusing on the release of the GPIF annual report. Indeed, it was very impressive, returning 25% in the Japanese fiscal year to March 21. Portfolio allocation for the world's largest pension fund is always a hot topic, and there will be some quite big changes in the quarter to March. Foreign bond holidays, were cut to 24.6%, uh, sorry, for foreign bond holdings were cut to 24.6% from 25.7%. Uh, was the GPIF behind the 10-year US Treasury sell-off? Who knows? While both foreign and domestic equity allocations were cut below the 25% benchmark, the big winners were domestic bonds, increased to 25.9% from 23.6%, a more conservative stance for the GPIF. So from a technical perspective, Whilst uh, anticipate a pullback to test uh, the monthly pivot here at 110.40, watch for bullish reversal patterns there, set long positions, targeting move up into uh, monthly range resistance at 112.86. From there, we may see a more protracted correction. At this stage, only a loss of the 110.30 would suggest that uh, we're looking at a deeper corrective pattern here, and uh, we could start to think about a retest of 109 from above. In terms of sterling, it's been a rather eventful week for the pound. The EU granted a delay to the chilled meat ban in Northern Ireland, temporarily calming market concerns about an escalation in trade tensions.
Still, it appears that strong political divergences persist and the risk for a new round of tough EU-UK trade negotiations later in the year is very high. Domestically, the Bank of England Governor Andrew Bailey warned against overreacting to temporary inflation pressures, prompting some repricing in tightening expectations. Overall, the pound has held up better than most of its G10 peers in the dollar's appreciating trend which also denotes how the market continues to see the recent sharp rise in Delta variant cases in the UK as unlikely to derail the country's economic recovery. In the week ahead, data releases should not be the main drivers and focus will likely be on another speech by Andrew Bailey, as well as any headlines from Angela Merkel's visit to the uh, UK. As long as the UK government does not suggest that the rise in cases will postpone the reopening further, there are a few reasons for the market to turn more bearish on the pound compared to G10 peers. So from a technical perspective, pound put in a nice reversal on Friday, but for a move up now to test uh, the monthly pivot at 139.50. From there, I'd be watching for bearish reversal patterns to see a test down to the pivotal 136.74. Uh, at this stage, only a close above uh, 140.80 would uh, refocus on upside objectives through the price cycle highs at 142.44. Lastly, uh, the Aussie dollar was one of the main victims of the dollar rally last week, dropping in line with most pro-cyclical currencies. Now the focus shifts to the pivotal Reserve Bank of Australia meeting on Tuesday. Based on recent communications by the RBA governor, there are four main options for the bank as it's set out to readjust its quantitative easing. Firstly, ceasing asset purchases. Second, uh, repeating a 100 billion Aussie dollar asset purchase scheme for six months and then reviewing it. Or thirdly, conducting a smaller amount like a 50 billion Aussie dollar of purchases for six months and then reviewing, or repeating uh, 100 billion Aussie dollars for a longer period than six months. Markets expect the RBA to go for the second option, which would allow them to steer away from the tapering narrative while adopting a more data dependent approach. If anything, I think this option three, uh, option three is the second most likely, although that would likely be seen by markets as a hawkish shift. I think that repricing is standing somewhere uh, or oh, sorry, market pricing really standing somewhere between uh, option two and three, which means that uh, the base case materializes uh, further $100 billion Aussie, uh, 100 billion Aussie dollars for six months. The impact on the Australian dollar could be negative. More crucially, uh, I think the RBA will not follow other developed central banks in signaling a rate hike in 2022, and markets may be forced to reprice some of their hawkish expectations which could add pressure to the Aussie dollar. So from a technical perspective, I'm looking for the Aussie to trade up into the monthly pivot, 75.80, watch for bearish reversal patterns in this zone to set short positions targeting the equality objective down to 74.20. At this stage, really, it would take a close through the 77 handle to suggest a return or an early return to the uptrend targeting the uh, re range resistance at 78.90. And that concludes the weekly market outlook for week commencing the 5th of July. As always, traders, plan the trade, trade the plan, most importantly, manage your risk. Until next time, thanks very much.